chance you got lost in November See it in your eyes when we leave for the night With too many heartbreaks still on your mind So this is not my usual setup uh, But I've been putting off doing this video for quite some time now And I just thought, you know what? The kids are gone um, It's after school And I'm basically done for the day So I just thought, let me use my time wisely And record this video for you guys And just get it out there Because I know some of you have been asking me so many questions And I do want to answer those questions So basically, this video is all about um, The most important things that you need to know As a teacher who is coming to Qatar Or is already in Qatar as a new teacher And you just basically want to find out information On what are the do's and what are the don'ts in teaching in Qatar because listen <laughs> there are some a lot of don'ts and trust me you guys I wish I had a YouTube video or watched YouTube videos concerning this when I first came to Qatar because when we got here in 2014 nobody <laughs> prepared us for what was to come and we just had to basically wing it but fortunately we had a good support system when it came to our colleagues who educated us while we were on the job as to what is acceptable and what is not acceptable <laughs> so forget everything that you know and watch this video to find out exactly what i'm talking about so just to let you know as well i am using my phone to record this video so if you see any shifting in the light just know that I'm using my phone, I'm using natural light because my battery on my camera decided to conk out as I was getting ready to just record this video. So this is what we have. So I will be looking on my iPad because I did make some notes. I have a script and everything, you guys, because I am professional like that. So I don't want to waste your time. Let's get straight into the first point. So first of all, let's talk about what teaching uh, jobs are available in Qatar. So you can either work in an international school or you can work in an English language teaching center. When we talk about international schools, currently at the moment, there are 422 international schools in Qatar. And these schools are high paying, well, majority of them are high paying, which means high paying jobs, high expectations and high rewards. Uh, I did make a video on the different packages that are available in Qatar. So if you do want to get more information about what packages are available, do make sure that you go and check that out. So teachers, um, in most scenarios, teachers will have an option to either teach in an international school, language school, or maybe even pursue uh, private tutoring. Now, this one is a bit of a tricky one because some schools are against private tutoring. So if you are interested in doing private tutoring, I will suggest just to be on the safe side, ask your school if they do not have a problem with private tutoring. But most cases, there is a policy against that. So you don't even need to ask anybody. Just look at your school policy and read up on it. And then you will know whether if you are or are not allowed to do private tutoring. Again, I stress this is very important because you can lose your job if you are found out. So rather be safe than sorry. So in language centers, teachers will basically provide um, lessons not necessarily based on one curriculum. Now in these types of uh, learning centers, teaching is more informal and more casual compared to your other international schools. So listen, if you are an early bird, teaching in Qatar will definitely be one for you. In an attempt to stay out of the midday scorching sun, school normally starts at 6.30, between 6.30 and 6.45 a.m. That's when teachers are expected to be at school. And children start school between 7 and 7.10. Majority of the schools, teachers finish at 2.30. Typically, learners will finish school at 1 o'clock or 1.30. As I said, schools are different. Um, with early years finishing an hour before your primary and secondary students. Now, most schools, if not all, provide extracurricular activities. So as a teacher, you will be required to take on some extracurricular activity. Now this does happen after school and you will not be required to stay after 2.30. So again, I'm speaking on the majority of the schools that I know. Some schools operate differently, but most of the schools that I know, if you as a teacher are taking on any extracurricular activities, you will be asked to, uh, to do this after school between 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Now, the school year um, the school year in Qatar begins in August, before it was September, but I've seen a change in when school starts. 
Um, in previous years, school used to start in September and finish in June. Now, school starts in August and finishes in June. So the last day for students is usually like the 30th of June or the last week of June. And in most schools, the school year is broken up into different terms. Now, in our school, we have three terms, but in other schools, um, the school year is broken up into two terms. So term one will be from August to around December. That's all, that'll be um, term one and term two will be from January all the way to June. Now in our school, we do it differently. We've got three terms. Term one is from, okay, let me try and think about this. Term one is August to, that's my computer. Term one is August to December. Term two is January to April. And term three is um, mid-April to June. <laughs> Please, I will have this on the screen. I'm just thinking from my head. I might be wrong, but I think I'm right. Guys, the most important thing that you need to remember as a teacher coming to teach in Qatar is that you are coming into a, a Muslim country. So the country is governed by Islamic laws. So <laughs> basically this means you have to be very careful. Okay. Now, as a non-Muslim teacher, you have to be extra vigilant in educating yourself about what you can and can't do in Qatar as a teacher. Not only as a teacher, just in general, because there are some things that we we do in the Western world that we do not or are not allowed to do here in Qatar. So I'm going to jump straight into some of the things that I think you guys might need to uh, be aware of. So the first one is public gestures. Now, Swearing in public, like um, putting up signs or using vulgar language, swearing, all of those things are unlawful and you can get yourself into serious trouble. Now, especially like you guys, when you are driving on the road here, let me tell you something. Driving on the road here is like, it's a sport on its own. <laughs> you know, you have to be... I don't know. Let me just give you my point of view. I don't drive in Qatar because I am so scared. It's like I don't even I can't even put it into words. It's just a different it's just a different experience. So, when that happens and you get agitated in maybe in the western world, you will put up a zap sign or you would swear or you would do whatever. Here, that is not allowed. You can't do stuff like that. So that is one thing that you need to be aware of. I would say that uh, when we first got here in 2014, it was really, really strict. It was extremely strict. Like, the, you know, there were certain things that you knew that you can't really do. Uh, for example, holding hands in public, even if uh, you were a married couple, that was not allowed. So we really had to quickly adjust because coming from South Africa, that is like a normal thing to do. When you are with your partner, you hold hands, you hug, you kiss in public and so on. Here, you can't do that. But lately, as I said, I have seen, um, lately I have seen a little bit of ease when it comes to things like that. I see couples holding hands now, but obviously showing PDA in public is not allowed. Still, I haven't seen anybody kissing in public. <laughs> Definitely a no-no. So yeah, just be aware of that. So save your affections for when you are at home. <laughs> okay, let's move on to dress code. Now, guys, as a teacher, when you are coming into school, I know that some people might be under the impression that you are working in the Middle East, that means you need to be covered from head to toe. That is not true. Different schools have different dress code policies. So in my old school, we had to make sure that our elbows are covered, your ankles are covered, you are wearing closed shoes, um, your cleavage is not showing. So s simple things like that, that you might take uh, for granted in your home country, here, you need to make sure that you are dressed accordingly because if you are not, you will be sent home. Now, for guys, it's a little bit different because for guys, in, in I think in most countries, as a teacher, you are supposed to come into school dressed in a shirt and tie. Some schools might be lenient in teachers not wearing a tie and they might say, okay, no, you don't really need to wear a tie as long as you're dressed in a formal t-shirt and formal pants, that's okay. So please, 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 
I am begging you have a read at the uh, have a read at the dress code policy that your prospective school is giving you if you are not given one please do make sure that you ask for one whether you ask for one before you land or you can ask for it when you start um, at your job the way that you dress in public as well is um, something that you need to really be aware of because I know that in some countries like I know for myself back home I used to wear like short skirts and you know like boob tube tops and go uh, to the mall or whatever it was never a problem but here trust me I, I know this from experience um, when if you wear short short things and go out in public like go to the mall or you know the cinema or whatever you are going to get stairs you know and they are not the right kind of stairs so again i do want to stress that this is a muslim country so you have to and it's a conservative country okay even though some of the things are eased up but it's still a muslim country so you have to be very respectful of um of the culture and you have to be respectful of the people as well so another thing that i do want to talk about you guys is um a, it could be a touchy topic but i think as a teacher coming into Qatar, this is something that you really need to be aware of or really, really take into consideration and just educate yourself on. Here, the only kind of family grouping <laughs> or orientation that you can talk about is your traditional family where you have a mom and you have a dad and you have children. Anything else outside of that, you cannot discuss with the children. So. I know in other countries this is something that children are taught from an early age and it is the norm but again you are coming into a muslim country which is governed by islamic law and those type of things are just not allowed so yeah without saying much or more to this matter just know that you have to be extra extra vigilant when it comes to what type of content you are using in the classroom make sure that the worksheets that you are using you are going through your worksheets with a fine tooth comb because it takes one mistake one mistake you guys for you to lose your job so speaking of worksheets now this remember um when you are in the classroom whatever materials you use in the classroom will eventually go home whether they go home on the same day or they go home at the end of the week or at the end of term parents will have access to whatever you are using in the classroom so with this in mind you need to know that things that um are talking about um other religion other than islam you can't include in worksheets or powerpoints or any kind of resource that you are going to be using in the classroom um, when you, with this, I'm talking about things like simple, simple things as a cross. Okay. Like a cross. So if you see that they, there's a cross or a picture of a church on your worksheet, remove it. Use, um, you know, use a blue tag, not blue tag, tipex or wipe out or whatever. Use whatever you need to use to remove that worksheet or rewrite the worksheets, retype the worksheets or find a different one but don't use worksheets with a cross or a church or uh, any other or worksheets depicting any other religion beside um, Islam another thing don't use worksheets that have pigs yes I know don't use worksheets that have pictures of pigs um, naked people by naked I mean even people dressed in bikinis you can't use those types of worksheets so anything that has the, that kind of picture don't use so i'll give you a clear example of what i'm talking about like for example when it comes to my children my children don't know uh, my denomination because they don't need to know about it like i know that in south africa this was something that we um, my kids and i used to talk about we used to talk about religion we used to talk about not that you are talking about religion because you want to convert anybody but it was just a discussion but here you can't do that right so my advice to you would be avoid anything and everything that has to do with any other religion if you are not a muslim teacher i would suggest that you do, you try your best 
to not discuss or speak about anything that has to do with Islam unless you are asking something because you want to gain knowledge but don't give your opinion when it comes to that so listen I could go on and on and on but obviously I don't want this video to be too long I just wanted to mention some of the things that I think are most important to, uh, for you to know as a teacher coming into Qatar or if you're considering um, accepting a job here. So what I would say to you is please do your research, find out any information about teaching in Qatar as much as you can and just educate yourself before you sign your offer letter. So that's it from me. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all the things that need to be done to get a word out about this video. Please do make sure that you check out my other videos in my playlist on teaching in Qatar. And I love you guys. I will see you on my next one. Bye-bye.